Hello everyone and welcome back to the Don't Kale My Vibe Gardening channel. I'm going to try and make this video without doing a voiceover because it's just my preferred method. And also, um, I don't like to do the voiceover, but sometimes my neighbor's dogs who live back here just hear me out here and start going insane. And I yell at them and I'm like, hey, I live here. And they, you know, don't care. So I'm going to show you guys what's already planted in the garden for April. As you can see, we just had a major thunderstorm. April showers bring May flowers is 100% true here in Northern Tennessee. Um, so I'm just gonna show you guys what's already out here and just kind of go over my plans for the garden. But like last year, I make a plan every year and it doesn't always go to plan. We're gonna start over here in this area. It looks kind of chaotic and messy. My dog's been tearing up the grass over here. We just put in the stone pathway. So this area is a work in progress, as you can see. Uh, this was initially last year, my flower garden bed where I had a bunch of zinnias and stuff like that but once my strawberry plants that I grew in the three tier planters got a little too big and out of season I planted them in the ground and they actually ended up spreading so last year I think I had about 15 plants and now I have about 20 from just things that replanted themselves so these are all strawberries they are june bearing strawberries and they came back and they're looking super healthy actually i think this is a really great spot for them so i'm just going to keep letting them spread over here i don't think i'll actually end up planting anything else in this bed with the exception of these tiny little chives if you can see them because onions and stuff like that are great companions for keeping pests away from strawberries i haven't seen a ton of pests and actually what I'm seeing is we're actually getting strawberries already so I'm super excited about that. I'm really glad this has been like a low maintenance slash no maintenance plant. I haven't even been watering it, I've just been letting the rain take care of it. But as you can see we have strawberries all here, here, over here and they have just spread throughout the bed completely and I've just done nothing to take care of them. Um, this is just protecting the baby chives. My dog stampedes over these every day and they are still looking really great. Sorry if you can't hear me over the wind. We're expecting another storm for the next three days actually. But this is my favorite garden bed of the season. I've been not having good luck with cool weather crops the last two years that I've been gardening in this backyard because we have such a short spring. So this year I actually sprinkled lettuce seeds, a variety pack of salad mixes, in I believe October or something like that because we have a very mild winter and they just came up as soon as it started to warm up a little bit and I've been getting fresh salads almost every single day. As you can see, this used to be a head of lettuce. This was a head of lettuce. This was a head. This is all lettuce that we harvested for dinner last night. I threw a couple radishes in here and as you can see, the arugula that I had in here, as soon as it started warming up and hitting 70 degrees, it went to seed so i'm just keeping these in here because i like the flowers and also we don't have a lot longer left for the cool weather crops so this is all the lettuce that i'm going to hopefully be eating in the next week because today is supposed to be 77 and pretty soon this lettuce is going to look a lot like this arugula so we have a bunch of different varieties in here so many different colors i've been loving doing this and i will definitely do this again next year over here in the bed to the left of that bed we actually have some lettuce that i transplanted from that bed just to make a little bit more space because i really overseeded this bed so they actually transplanted really well surprisingly and then over here is some lettuce that i planted a little bit later i was trying to succession plant i think it's called where you plant kind of in cycles so that we always have fresh lettuce i didn't realize how much lettuce was in this bed so we have haven't even touched this new lettuce that's coming up I'm gonna let it just grow and get bigger and then eventually hopefully we'll be able to harvest it there are some really sad spinach plants in here <laughs> so they didn't turn out too well so spinach has not been my crop this is the first time I've tried growing it though so maybe next year I'll try something different but yeah the spinach not so great the lettuce has been doing great and then we just should grab a couple weeds while we're over here last year i actually planted my tomatoes along the sides of these trellises they did not really enjoy growing on the arch here but the peas did love it so once we get to that bed i'll talk about that but this year i'm trying something different for my tomato plants the indeterminate ones that just keep growing i got these wooden stakes i got a bunch of uh, planting twine i'm not sure what that's called but uh, I'm gonna use the twine, I'm gonna interplant the tomatoes with cosmos and zinnias, and then probably some basil plants and stuff down here. And this is where my tomatoes and some flowers are gonna go. And then I'm gonna create the trellis with the string and just hope that's all well supported with these 
pikes or whatever they're called. A couple videos ago, you guys saw me do these tri planters of lettuce. And as you can see, it has long since been harvested. So we did have the lettuce in here. It did really well, but just for the fact that this lettuce bed is so successful, this one wasn't really necessary. So I didn't really plan on cut and come again with this lettuce. Sorry, I know I could have worded that better. But as you can see, it is trying to come back, but I've basically given up on these tri planters. The cilantro that was in here has long since bolted. So I'm gonna let this go to seed and maybe collect seeds from it, but I loved having the cilantro while it lasted. I also wanna point out that my lawn is actually mostly clover this year. This was not intentional, but I love it. It's so springy and soft and nice to walk on when it's not super muddy out. And we have a big dog who tears up the grass. And so this has been really resilient to that. And I love it. It only grows like so high, but we do mow it and it just comes right back. So in the future, for bare spots in my lawn, I might consider clover seeds. Okay, and then we come to the big garden bed over here. I have two blueberry bushes, one over here and one over here. One is doing a lot better than the other one. This one only has one little set of flowers and potential blueberries. Well, it has a couple others too, but it's only got like three flowers on it. This one, however, had so many. So as you can see, we have so many little blueberry blooms over here. All the flowers have actually just fallen off. So hopefully they're pollinated and we'll get a ton of blueberries this year because last year I got zero. And in the middle of this bed, I actually have carnations and these are not supposed to be planted out here yet. These are actually just seedlings that got super leggy in my house. And I thought instead of just throwing them away or throwing them into a compost or something, I'd give them a fair chance. And I threw them in the center of this bed and they actually haven't died yet or anything. Um, as you can see, this one probably has like root rot or something because of all the rain we've been getting, but some of them don't look too bad. I know we're kind of bouncing around a lot, but this is my third garden bed. This is gonna be peppers and maybe some eggplants. I have three different eggplant varieties this year. I'm also planting some really strongly scented things to hopefully keep pests away like chamomile and this is lemon thyme from last year. This is actually overwintered and came back to be quite a full little herb bush here. So I love that. These are both chamomile here. This one's actually starting to get its first flower. So I'm really excited about that. I love making my own chamomile tea. In here, I just tried some winter sowing and that's another chamomile plant. But this bed in particular might have maybe one or two pepper plants in it. But other than that, it's gonna be all herbal things like this. I'm also going to be planting some feverfew, I think, which is another medicinal herb slash flower that I'll probably put somewhere over here. It looks a lot like chamomile, so I'm expecting this bed to be fairly pretty to look at. This bed is really exciting to me. This year I decided to plant just double the amount of peas that I did last year, because last year I only planted two peas per section because I had a tomato plant in between them. This year I just did full walls of peas, and as you can see, they are doing great. I planted these in a video for you guys, so you can look back and see when that was, but I think it was March maybe, but they all came up and they've been trellising up here. It is so beautiful later in the spring slash summer when they are covering this uh, trellis that I put together with just panels and whatever these are called. And the variety that I planted this year is different from last year. These are sugar snap peas. So those are just gonna be a fun little garden snack and hopefully we get a lot of them. And then over here I planted carrots. The carrots are not doing too great because before we put this up, the birds and squirrels were digging through it. So there's a lot of bare patches in here, but we do have several rows of carrots. These I believe are the long carrots. And then this bed is where we planted those round Paris carrots. And this is the bed that's kind of doing the worst. There's a lot of bare spots in the rows. So this was supposed to be a full row of carrots and we've got a huge bare spot. And instead of just planting more carrots, I decided to just let these go and get as many as I can get because eventually other things are gonna be planted in this bed after the carrots come out. And as you can see, we just have a whole bunch of peas doing their thing on either side of all of these beds. And now the last section of the garden, I recently got this dog gate for because this is my in-ground garden and I wanna keep the dog from trampling everything. So I moved my greenhouse in here and put this up. This was actually fairly cheap and super sturdy and I love the way it looks. So I'm super happy with this gate. I am contemplating putting some more raised garden beds on the outside of it. Uh, I just haven't decided yet. I do have some grow bags that are com coming out here so they might go over here instead of another garden bed, but we'll see how excited I get once the weather warms up and the last frost date passes. So this is the entrance. There's my neighbor's dog. Okay, I waited a little bit for the neighbor's dogs to go inside so I could film this 
without doing a voiceover because I would really prefer not to. But over here, this was originally my cucumber trellis last year. I'm not doing cucumbers this year because I have just never had luck with them. They grow super odd shapes. They turn green and then immediately turn yellow before I can even pick them and it just wasn't worth the trouble. So while I have the trellis over here, I just threw some more peas. These are also sugar snap. So like I said, I'm really expecting a lot of sugar snap peas this year, hopefully, fingers crossed. But there we just have a couple of them. I think there's five. And then two years ago, I planted a blackberry bush over here and I didn't get any blackberries on it in the last two years, but it is growing and it is still alive and green. It is like trellising all up. I actually slung it over one of these tree branches. So maybe eventually we'll get a couple blackberries. I've always heard that they're kind of invasive and they spread really easily, but that's not been in my experience. Um, I've just had this one plant here for the last two years and haven't seen anything like blackberry spreading. Over here we have some plants in the ground and then some things that I put out here that were supposed to be cold weather crops that aren't doing too great, such as the snowball cauliflower, which is still alive. I just think it's stunted because it hasn't done anything beyond this point in the last several weeks. Over here we have some kale that I think got a little bit too much water and this I think is a Chinese cabbage. I have a couple herbs in the ground. This is some cilantro that is bolting, but like I said, I'm gonna try and collect seeds from this because I've been trying to grow cilantro in the house. I'll probably do that over the summer. So I have some older cilantro here, some newer cilantro here, and some parsley that's doing really well. We have some more failed spinach right here. There was three of them, but now I only see two. There used to be one right here. And like I said, spinach is not my plant. It does not wanna grow for me, and that's fine. This is a purple Sicily cauliflower, I think it's called. Um, again, this one's getting a little chewed up and also hasn't grown beyond this part, beyond this point. This is just where I sprinkled some poppy seeds not too long ago. They are sprouting. I might have done it a little bit too late in the season. I don't know if we'll actually get poppy flowers, but I figured it was worth a try. I planted two beans out here yesterday. We're not to our last frost date yet, but these were really healthy and kind of outgrowing their pots. So I threw them out here just on the odd chance that we don't get cold weather in the next week because our last frost date is next next week. And then this I just planted this morning. It is a teeny tiny nasturtium. So the leaves are about the size of my fingertips and I'm about to take you into the greenhouse and show you what a healthy nasturtium looks like. But I think this one might be stunted. So this is my greenhouse of plants. I've started some of these plants in the greenhouse here that I'll talk you guys through. Some of these I started in the house like this tomato plant. This one is the Marmond, I think, tomato plant and it is outgrowing this pot it needs to be outside like yesterday and in the ground it's already starting to flower actually so it looks pretty healthy for now but i'm hoping it'll last another week until i can put it in the ground and then we have some dill here this is my second dill plant because i accidentally left my first one outside and it got a frost and pretty much immediately died but i did harvest a lot of dill from it beforehand this is what a healthy nasturtium looks like the leaves are huge much bigger than my fingertip so this one's gonna be a great trap crop for the pests and keeping it away from my other stuff this is a mystery basil it tastes awful i'm actually only continuing to grow it to kind of dis attract pests and also there's some plants that i'm growing just for the fact that i can supplement my chickens diets with it and basil is one of those so even though this one tastes really soapy and awful to me i'm gonna give that to the chickens and hopefully they won't mind it some of my favorite basils this year are the lime basil and the lemon basil so i have those in pots right now but they might actually end up going in the ground or in a garden bed this is my rosa bianca eggplant plant that i started inside in the hydroponic garden it was looking pretty healthy but the leaves are looking kind of yellow now so I might need to add some more nitrogen or fertilizer to this so that way it gets you know a little more healthy before it needs to go in the ground and then over here we have just a mixture of things and honestly some of these are mysteries because I planted them kind of a long time ago um, for example I have no idea what that is it might be sorrel I'm not sure this one I have no clue I think that's dill these are some pumpkin seeds that I threw in here that one, again, I have no clue. These are some zinnia, these are some marigolds, and then this is alyssum. So that is everything inside the greenhouse. And then another, and my last cold weather crop, is this Brussels sprout that's been doing pretty well. I started this inside, and we are actually starting to see 
Brussels sprouts. So that's been super exciting. It has been getting chewed up a little bit, but since these aren't the leaves we're gonna be eating, I don't really mind too much. But I did sprinkle some orange peels to keep away aphids. I think that's supposed to work. And so we'll see if it does. And that is everything that is planted in this garden bed. This is where I'm going to be putting my pumpkins. The first year I planted things in this garden bed, it was pumpkins and they did so well. The second year, absolute fail. They all died immediately. So I don't know, this bed is so hit or miss that I'm not really sure what I'm gonna be putting over here yet, except for squash. And that is my April garden tour. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this. I know it's kind of boring to see garden beds that don't have much in them yet, but I wanna be able to film a video like this once a month so you guys can see the monthly progress of the garden. And I thought that'd be exciting to see. So let me guys, let me guys know, let me know what you guys would like to see from the gardening channel in the upcoming weeks as we get into planting. But other than that, I'll see you guys in the next one.